Greetings all. Welcome to another session here of Tuesday Talks. And for today's discussion, we are going to be looking into evaluating a uh, language curriculum, the design of that language curriculum, to see if it meets up to the standards or if there are changes need to be done. Right? It's just going through this design or this, uh, this evaluation process. So we'll look at the whole evaluation process. And if you see our little design here, our little picture here, we're looking at the outside uh, circle. We're looking at all the parts to see uh, how they're being done, how they're being processed, how it's working out. So we're going to look at the whole program. We'll talk about some of the steps for evaluating, ways to do some evaluating, how you gather information, and then how you present the stuff that you're going to be collecting. So up until now in this course, we've really been looking at uh, how to set it up, how to design, how to plan, design, and implement uh, the curriculum development. Uh, so that you can use it wherever you are. And we've talked about it in broad terms, you know, how it's a it's an entire curriculum with all these different levels and all these different courses within the level. We've also talked about it as just one course. Um, it's going to depend on where you are. Ideally, when you create a curriculum, you should create it for everything that your system is going to need, including how to get them into the system and how to get them out of the system, out of your system. In any event, uh, we're going to do a whole program evaluation here. We're going to look at the aspects of the curriculum from planning to executing and then looking at the results. So we want to look at the whole picture. We're going to look at things, for example, like are the goals a good fit for the students? Well, that's a good question that you may want to ask as you're doing an evaluation. Are your teachers prepared to teach the courses? You may have great course ideas. You may have a great curriculum, but your student, your teachers can't handle the work. Maybe they're inexperienced. Maybe they don't have time uh, to implement the new changes. Could all happen. Are the goals effective? Is the curriculum actually getting the results that you want? Right? Okay. Are the students satisfied with the results of the course? You know, you may be getting the result that you want that students are learning, but they're not happy with the results. They want more or they want a different topic. Something you can look at when you're doing an evaluation. Our students completed the objectives of the course in a timely fashion. They have to take the course once or twice. How long does it take them to get done? Are the goals you've set up actually doable by the end of that particular course? Uh, when you look at an evaluation, really, it's kind of like a research on the curriculum. You've built this thing, and now we're going to say, OK, now let's investigate this. And you begin to do an investigation of the thing you built. Of course, if you haven't built it, and you're thinking about changing it, that's another type of research where you're investigating how this stuff is. You're evaluating. So that's kind of the way I would look at it when I'm saying I'm going to evaluate a program. I'm doing a research on it. How effective is it? Are all the necessary pieces there? Type of thing. We're going to evaluate the whole program. OK, what are the steps in evaluating a program? Well, one of the questions you want to ask when you're looking at these steps is, who's uh, Who's asking for it? Why do we want this evaluation? You know, oftentimes when we have a, a change in the gatekeeper, you know, a change in the uh, the uh, departmental head or the program leader or the head of a school or the head of a company, all of a sudden they're now doing evaluations to check that. Who's asking for this? Uh, could be a new teacher. Could be the students who are saying, hey, we want changes because of the problems. You should ask yourselves and whoever's doing this, who wants this information? Uh, it may be that you have a good program, but somebody just, you know, they're new guys in the show and they want to do an evaluation. So, the question. Uh, what's the purpose for the evaluation? You know, uh, is it for improvements? Hey, how can we make this better? Is it for expansion? Hey, let's find out where we're, we can expand and then go out. Or is it for reduction? Well, we're trying to save money. We don't have the room. How can we cut this down and still make it good, right? Is it <clears throat> necessary now? Another possible question that they may ask. How much will it cost in terms of time, in terms of money? If the cost is high, they may not want to do it. Okay? If the cost is high in time and money. It also means that if you're going to do an evaluation, if you want to do an evaluation, and I think you should be evaluating your materials, uh, you should try to do this in such a way that it saves, that it doesn't cost a lot in terms of time and money. Uh, needs to mean, means that we need to be creative. Okay, what data is to be gathered? How are we going to analyze this? Well, in order to analyze the program, we need to collect data. 
we need to look at syllabi and uh, you know test score results and maybe talk to people and of course there's a lot of things you can collect to evaluate it what are we going to collect okay and it'll depend on how much time and money you have are the stakeholders on board it's just say hey I want to do this evaluation but the students aren't interested the school's not interested your teachers aren't interested right maybe a little more difficult to try to implement uh, an evaluation if they're not interested how are you going to present the data how are you going to present this data so that it's going to elicit the result that you want okay elicit the result that you want so you want to be able to look at how you're going to be presenting this so that you can uh, persuade the way you want to persuade different types and focus uh, for evaluation um, I don't like these words that they use here and again this is off of uh, Nation and McAllister at least in the public school system in the US the terms formative and summative are generally assigned to um, assessment for uh, students and or for classes uh, with regard to their uh, quality of work uh, they're doing a little bit of a twist here. They're actually evaluating the course in terms of a temporary or a small segment of evaluation versus a complete segment of evaluation. So they've got a little bit of a difference uh, for what these words mean at, than what you would get outside of a language course. Formative an assessment normally would be uh, a quick snapshot of someone's um, ability and or progress or a quick snapshot of work that's being done in a course so I I would be able to do a formative assessment of an activity that I do for example or formative assessment to find out whether students understood this one section because I gave them a quiz or I gave them an oral or an oral test or something like that uh, whereas a summative would be like a final a final exam or a final um, portfolio um, which would cover the entire course okay for it's a summation it's a completed thing formative is that it's still forming uh, nation and McAllister take a different approach to this word they're looking at it more as uh, in terms of uh, are we judging the course is it good or bad or do we seek to improve the course um, there are similarities uh, but just know that there's going to be a little difference here uh, with uh, with the, this text Okay, so the purpose for the formative would be more, how do I improve the course? Take a, a look at this thing the way it is, but how can I make it better? Whereas a summative one is now going to say, okay, we have it now, now let's judge the course as a whole. Okay, uh, The length of these is also going to be different. For formative, it's going to be shorter. It's a short-term thing. It's more of a quick thing. Again, like I said, like that snapshot. Um, and as opposed to a summative which is going to be longer it's actually looking at the entire course uh, we look at what it's used for uh, formative would be looking for the causes or the processes or the individuals it's looking at a smaller segment right it's looking for a cause of something or the process how's this process working out whereas the summative is looking at the end game okay it's looking at the results. It's looking at the, the groups or looking at the standards that are involved. Okay, This one, the formative looks to improve the course, to revise certain components, to make it better. We can build it better. The summative one is asking whether is the course is adequate or do we need to get rid of the course, right? Um, so it's a little different uh, in, the, in the, uh, the way it's set up here. With regard to how we present the results, uh, some ways that you can do this, you can present it as more of a discussion. Uh, here are the results of what we've learned, and maybe we want to try to revise what we have here. Um, as opposed to of a summative more type of presentation where it's basically a report. And uh, we all know what happens to reports, right? So um, it's less of a discussion. It's more of a this is what I found type of thing. Okay? Formative assessments are more focused on uh, the process and summative is more focused on the product. Um, so we're seeing a little, a little bit of a difference between the two ends here. Um, to be honest, uh, if I'm evaluating, I actually want to do both. I want to look at the processes that are going on. I want to take these little snapshots as I go along through a course or as I evaluate a curriculum. And at the same time, I want to look at that end product. 
Uh, I like the way they use product and process here. It's very similar to the writing schemes that many writing teachers uh, learn and then uh, try to teach to their students. That you can look as a paper at a paper and a document they need to create as a process approach or a product approach. And to be honest, you need both. It is a process because you're not just going to write it and you're done. You're going to have to go through the process of brainstorming and organizing and revising and thinking about things and adding new ideas and trying to weave a thread in. It's a long process. In the end, however, you are delivering a product. And so both can be here when you're doing an evaluation for a course. Um, additionally, uh, McAllister uh, and nation they suggest also looking at some of the cognitive and affective and resources involved in the process and this is not formative or su uh, summative at all this is can be for any any type of uh, study that you do so for example we can look at the cognitive aspects of the uh, of the course of the program of the curriculum uh, is the work getting done? I know I'm just being cognitive here. Is the work getting done? Are the knowledge and the skills and the ability, are they being gained? Can we have a measurable uh, notation of some form of success? Um, and so that's, that would be the cognitive elements. What about the affective elements? I feel good about it. I feel confident about it. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, I can look at a program and look at those elements. Okay, students may be gaining knowledge, but they may not be uh, enjoying the process. Well, that's going to be a problem somewhere. Uh, I don't know where you'd put that in the rest of the evaluation, so they're suggesting that you put it here, and I, I, I agree, it's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to have that there, so make sure that you're going to be looking at effective measures. You also want to look at resources, and uh, resources in terms of cost and availability and then quality. Um, I, I oftentimes tend not to use a textbook. Uh, when I'm teaching uh, ESL courses. And uh, that might be an issue of quality. Maybe uh, the materials I I'm using aren't good enough and I should pick something else. Certainly cost is going to be an issue if you're purchasing a large uh, system or a large uh, uh, number of books. Something you need to look at as far as evaluate. Is it worth uh, the added cost? Okay. So here are just some types of things that you can look at when you're um, when you're evaluating a curriculum, um, and you can recognize that you're dealing just different ways of taking snapshots, whether they're up close or whether they're back up further, okay? whether you're looking at the process or the product, different ways of looking at this whole procedure. Okay? Um, you're going to be doing this evaluation. How do we do this? How do we actually go through this process? Well, I've got to collect information. And so where can I start collecting information to evaluate the program? A couple of things that I can do is I can do interviews. I can interview students, teachers, administrators, parents, uh, other stakeholders that might be uh, involved. Talk to them. What do they think about the program? I remember when I was working at a school in Japan and, and uh, there was a group of uh, uh, my colleagues who were actually doing a research. And one of the things they did was they interviewed a whole bunch of the uh, uh, professors who taught uh, primarily science and business uh, courses and they went and asked them about their ESL students what was good what was bad and they brought they gave us information they're not related at all to our program but they tell us well our your students are good at this but they need help in this and that helps me evaluate my program so go out and do interviews you can do self reports you can do self reports uh, from the teachers from the students um, and so I mean, those are some pluses and minuses. Bear in mind um, that you're going to get reports from these people, but you may also get uh, some reports that are prejudiced. Uh, so for example, you may be interviewing teachers who actually help build the curriculum. Well, they may be more, more amenable to saying it's a good thing. Uh, you may have students who are lazy or students who are um, uh, not focused on what they're doing and they may bring back a bad report. You may have teachers who didn't like the changes and so they're going to give a bad report. So you need to evaluate what they're giving you in terms of uh, the circumstances that are going on. You can go through observation checklists. Um, just sitting into a in a class or looking at materials that are done and checking off whether items are being covered that are supposed to be covered. Uh, you can look at test results. 
And uh, there are a lot of places who will use, for example, a TOEFL test as a test result. Or they'll use achievement tests that uh, classes give as a test result. Or a speech or any number of things where you can look and say, okay, they're meeting the criteria. You can also look at, you can also focus on different things. You can focus, for example, on the amount of learning. How much is being learned? You can focus also on the quality of learning. So students may be learning vocabulary, and you can say, hey, look, they passed this vocabulary test. They know all these words. But when you actually ask them to use those words, they can't use them nearly as well. They can't diversify the, the use of a particular uh, words. Well, so they may get a lot of in the amount category, but the quality category is going to be a little different. Which one do you want to evaluate? You can do both, right? The quality of the effectiveness of the teaching. Right? You can look at, at that. How do you evaluate what is quality? How can you evaluate what's effective? I think I can do, but um, you know, you're going to be looking at how they're teaching. How effective is their work? Are the students actually learning? Are the students actually wanting to learn more? Right? Then it's a, actually, it's a different question. About the quality or the cost of resources. Um, is it too expensive? I mean, this stuff is really working, but it's so expensive. Uh, maybe that we don't want to use it, or uh, you know we have money to to spend, and we can do more with you know different resources. Again, we're evaluating that. You can evaluate student teacher satisfaction. That's what those little um, questionnaires are at the end of uh, a lot of courses at uh, public schools, or and actually most a lot of schools where they have the students fill out this form. You know, the course was good, the teacher was good, the materials were good. You know, I like the class, that type of thing, and they check things off and lay, leave notes and. So you can do uh, satisfaction uh, types of surveys with uh, students there, right? All right, <clears throat> when you're going to prepare presenting things, so let's, let me just go back. You're going to have to set up interviews. You're going to have to set up reports, self-reports. You're going to have to set up these observation uh, checklists, or you're going to have to find, decide which things you're going to be you know, evaluating, be it a test or a paper or whatever. You need to collect this information. Uh, you need to prepare that stuff, and then you need to deploy it. Okay, so you're gonna have to go out and gather this information, uh, and obviously you're gonna. It would be good if these people were on board saying yes, we want to do this evaluation. When you're done with that, after you've collected this information, well, now you got to do something with it. You've looked at it, you've analyzed it, you may have talked about it. Now you need to present it. Now you need to collect all this information and present it in such a way that someone can get the. Uh, you, you know, the two-page, the five-page overview so they can get a picture of what's going on so you can help uh, the powers that be decide what do they want to do with this. Uh, do they want to uh, leave it as is? Do they want to make small changes? Do they want to cut, add? They, then they can decide because they have the evaluation done. So we're going to try to prepare the findings. One thing you need to remember is confidentiality. There may be some people <clears throat> who decide to... Uh, uh, complaint about uh, particular people or about a particular uh, component within the existing curriculum. They're complaining. Well, they're also hoping and assuming that you're not going to be using their name to make these complaints known. Okay? Uh, true story. This actually happened to me. I was interviewed at a school and uh, they liked me very much. <laughs> and I had the opportunity to sit down and um, be interviewed by every faculty member in the in the language program and some of the people that I spoke to were praising the school great opportunities great chances to uh, um, great chances to uh, you know excel and do research and meet with students a good majority of the teachers however came and said to me um, that there were problems with regard to uh, I don't know bias or discrimination or possible prejudice um, based on um, academic credentials. And I was kind of taken aback. And so I thought about it, prayed about it, and decided this probably isn't where I want to work because they have issues. And I wanted to encourage them to fix their house, make sure that they have a good unity within the school. And uh, I wrote a letter to that effect. And I wrote that letter to the head of the school, not thinking that that person at the head of the school would you know, display all this information to everybody else. Well, it caused a huge storm. Because this 
teachers who were complaining to me in this interview, in these interviews, didn't anticipate that everybody else would know about it. And I did not anticipate when I wrote the letter that it would be spread out to everybody. And it caused a huge rift at that uh, particular school. Um, and I only found out about this because years later I, would, I met a couple of the, the uh, former teachers at that school and they were saying it was, it, I, was, uh, I, I caused problems there because of confidentiality. Because information was given out that shouldn't have been given out. So when you're doing this, especially if you run into problems, dis, you know, complaints, dis, keep that confidentiality. Okay? In addition, you're working with a small group of people. It may not be too hard to figure out who's in charge, um, uh, you know, who's the big wigs and who aren't. So remember ego. If I could say any other word, it would be humble. As you're trying to do this evaluation, you, you, you lavish pr appropriate praise to those who have worked on that on this uh, curriculum that you're evaluating. We don't want to hurt people when we do evaluations. We're trying to make things uh, so that they are better or so that they can be uh, established. And so be careful with regard to ego. Uh, you may go into a place and you may mean uh, a newbie or you may be asked to do this. You've got other people who may have been there and they're there longer. And they have, uh, they have emotions. So be mindful of that. Okay. Also, remember, iron sharpens iron. You can help improve a program, yes, but if you do it in such a way that you're not helping them, they may not help you. And so we want to sharpen each other. We want to help one another to make a program better. Okay. So remember confidentiality. Remember ego. Remember that we can help one another. Uh, and that's really going to be the main goal, so that we have a better program. That's why we're doing the evaluation, right? Another thing that you should look at is, are, is the thing that we're evaluating. Are we evaluating the program based on an older program? Are we basing it on a program at another school? Are we basing it on a quote-unquote set of standards that a program should include? Okay, so just for example, we could base this, uh, uh, this uh, curriculum, Curriculum X, based off of uh, Nation and McAllister's textbook. We could do that comparison. What are we comparing it against? Maybe we could compare it to previous scores from previous, previous programs. You know, a number of ways to do this. But find out what it is so that you can do that proper measurement. Okay? Um, additionally, when you do a report, oftentimes the report is written and then oral. It's presented. I'm going to present it in such a way again so that it's uh, interesting and exciting. You're going to catch the, uh, the hearer's uh, ears should provide good feedback, okay? It should provide uh, uh, good feedback so that we can improve anything that needs lacking, okay? Again, we don't want to hurt people. We want to help improve the system. That's all I have for evaluation. Um, again, if you're trying to look for more information on this, you can look at uh, Nation of McAllister's uh, text on language curriculum design. It is very important uh, that you go through this process uh, of evaluating. Um, I often call it uh, a life cycle uh, where you finally, you've finished uh, doing everything, you've finished creating everything, you've gone through this process, and now you want to go back and look at it again. So you go through the process again. Right, you go on again and try to look and see if you can find some way to make it better. So continue this process of, of evaluating things as you go along, even your own materials in your own classes. Uh, my students will tell me clearly that I ask that at the end of uh, every course that I teach. Uh, how was the course? How can I make it better? And I do listen to their suggestions. Um, not always, <laughs> but I do listen to their suggestions and try to uh, make the course so that it's more beneficial to them. I recommend that you do the same. It was nice talking to you all. Hope to talk to you later. Have a good day now. Bye-bye.